Justin. All the gossip. gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. With Angela. Angela. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. All right. So Forbes has an exclusive interview with Kanye West that they did via text. And the headline is that Kanye is indeed running for president and trying to get onto various state ballots because he wants to siphon votes from Joe Biden. Now, according to this article, when he was asked about that directly, West said that rather than running for president, he was walking quickly and adding that he was walking to win <laughs> when they pointed out that he actually can't win in 2020, that he won't be on enough ballots to yield 270 electoral votes and that a writing campaign isn't feasible and was serving as a spoiler. Kanye West replied, I'm not going to argue with you. Jesus is king. So now, Charlamagne, I know you have some of these messages. Um, I mean, I've seen some texts, but no, yeah, that's what it is. And then, and then after that, Jesus is King, uh, the dude from Forbes, his name's Randall Forbes. He tweeted or he texted. So then, what person, people are driving it? Who is directing the ballot access, etc.? Because when you do things, you do them big, and this doesn't feel like a Kanye West production. And Kanye just replied, "God production." So I don't understand how they get the whole Kanye says he's trying to siphon votes votes from Joe Biden. I don't know how you create a whole article saying that based off those texts. But, you know, here's the thing. Like yeah. I said yesterday, G GOP strategists could potentially be doing that. And, and Kanye doesn't know because all you would have to do is offer assistance and, and, and get him on a ballot. But he's not on any of the ballots. And once again, why are we talking about this stupid ass story? Because Kanye West campaign is not real. Now, Kanye is also, according to this article, designing a school within the next month, and he's meeting with Betsy DeVos about the post-COVID curriculum. So, my goodness, um, yeah, and I'm not I don't, sure. And, and I, you know, it's weird when people even get upset about stuff like that because they'll be like, "Oh, see, it's showing that he's down with GOP people." It's just like all Democrats are down with GOP people as well. They got to work across the aisle to get things done. I, I, I don't know. I'm not the highest right. weed in the dispensary, so. Well, y'all want to hear some good news? Please. Nia DaCosta is Captain Marvel 2's director. She is the first black woman to direct a Marvel film. Congratulations to Nia DaCosta. That is amazing. She was the director and co-writer for That's Jordan Peele's Reimagining of Candyman, which is coming out in October. And she was selected by Jordan Peele specifically to direct what was called Candyman 2020. So congratulations to her. That is amazing. Definitely That's will be dope. watching that. Anthony Mackie, if you remember... Uh, had talked about the lack of diversity within Marvel. He had said, it really bothered me that I've done several Marvel, seven Marvel movies where every producer, every director, every stunt person, every costume designer, every PA, every single person has been white. We've had one black That's producer. Hard. His name was Nate Moore. He produced that Black Panther. That's hard. I'm one of the, I guess I'm one of the f a few guys that like Captain Marvel, but I think Captain Marvel is dope. Well, but you know, I'm going to go see her. Yes. You're going to be lost. So. That's okay. I know, see Paul. Going. You, ain't even see you, ain't, you ain't even you ain't even see Paul one. Our I Avengers watch it before Endgame. I go see it. I watch it before I go see it. But whatever, I'm still gonna go support. It don't matter. Absolutely, I'll be lost. Too. All right, Mark Zuckerberg is just uh, just became the third person on Earth worth over 100 billion dollars. So, yes, his uh, fortune surpassed 100 billion after Facebook launched their TikTok competitor in the U.S. So congratulations to him. I'm, and listen, I'm money. not mad at that. I don't get mad when I hear those kind of numbers. The reason I don't get mad when I hear those kind of numbers is because Mark Zuckerberg created something and that something became the biggest something and he gets paid for what he created. That's what a capitalist, you know, free enterprise society is all about. Not mad at it. All right. And since we're talking about apps, Snapchat is now going to let users register to vote in their app. So they have new guides and features and it's going to help young users register and otherwise prepare to vote. It's called Voter Registration Mini. It'll also keep a tally of how many users have registered to vote throughout the app. And they also are launching a new voter guide, which will provide Snapchat users with information on voting by mail, voter registration, and ballot education. So that's dope, too. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Kiki Palmer is going to be hosting the VMAs. So congratulations to her. She's been announced as the host. That's going to take place at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn on August 30th. So that'll be great. I think she's a great host. I'm interested. I think it'll be dope. Yeah, Kiki's dope. Mm -hmm. Kiki's dope. I like, I've always liked Kiki's energy. She's dope. She's going to be a good host. So it's going to be live at the Barclays Center? Uh, yeah, it's going to be live. They I don't know if there's going to... there? I, oh, I don't think that there's going to be people there. Oh. But, but it will take place at the Barclays. Interesting. Yes. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your room. Oh, and one last thing I wanted to talk about is Megan Thee Stallion. Um, she's the new face of Revlon, so congratulations to her. This was announced yesterday. She got a lot of positive things happening for her right now, so I'm really happy for Megan Thee Stallion. Obviously, the new WAP song came out last night at midnight, mm -hmm. and she also announced yesterday she is the new face of Revlon. She also went live to talk about things that are happening in her life. And she was responding to some of the questions on her live. Listen to this. The person says, what did you feel after getting shot? I felt like really crazy. I felt like, why did I get shot? Like, what did I do? I just felt very betrayed by a friend. I felt very betrayed by all my friends. So again, y'all, enough with the jokes. Okay, about her getting shot. That's a traumatizing experience. Leave it alone. Let it go. Let her process it. I'm sure at some point, whatever happened will come out, but just leave it alone. She got shot. That's terrible. Yeah, everything you're saying is absolutely correct, -y, but the internet don't give a damn. Okay, the internet, the internet is ruthless and cold hearted, and you're not going to win against them. You just got to turn your damn phone off. All right, well, that is your rumor report.